The headline reads, Norwegian boys in Thailand, hostages for a dead man's debt. Kotal. For almost four weeks, the Norwegian brothers aged 16 and 20 respectively have lived alone without money or passports. The boys ended up in trouble when their mother's Swedish partner, 37, took his own life on the holiday island of Koh Tao in the Gulf of Thailand, leaving the boys and their mother, 40, heavily in debt. Throughout the long luxury holiday, the Swede had given the impression that he had money and was going to settle the bill. This is the reason why the boys are now sitting as hostages for a hotel bill they have no way of settling. The boy's Norwegian mother left them four weeks ago when she thought she would be able to raise the money at home in Norway. But no one will lend her the money and now the 40-year-old woman realizes that the family needs help. But no authorities have been able to offer help to get the boys out. The debt increases. Verdensgang has met the mother in Oslo and the boys in Thailand. The young boys now find the situation very unpleasant. The 16 year old said, people are friendly, but it's uncomfortable. The debt increases every day. Now we owe almost 50,000 Norwegian krona here, and there are three living wages down here. The passports have been seized by people we owe money to. Someone follows us when we move around the island so that we don't run away. The Norwegian authorities are aware of the boy's situation, but have understood that the family would solve the problems themselves. The local police on the small island cannot communicate with tourists in English. When after several weeks in Norway, the mother has not been able to raise the money herself, she and her sons ask for help from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Child Protection but there are no rules that dictate how a situation like this should be resolved. It was the dream of starting a new life in the tropical paradise that was the start of the tragic and very special case. The Oslo woman and her Swedish partner were on holiday on the island of Koh Tao last November. They completely fell for the beautiful island which is considered the best place for divers in Thailand. They plan to raise money and then start a bar themselves after the new year. The partner assured her that he had money. The woman then travelled back to Oslo while he remained on the island. At home, she and her eldest son, 20, worked around the clock in December and were able to save 32,000 Norwegian krona, which they brought with them when all three of them travelled down in January. Don't skimp on anything. The woman quit her regular job as a bartender when she left. The mother said, My partner claimed he had hidden his money in a safe place. When we came down, we started spending mine and my son's savings. My partner thought we shouldn't save on anything and that the boys should take care of themselves. So we rented motorbikes, went diving and lived well in the restaurants there and paid with our money. The money ran out. The passports had been pawned by the motorbike rental companies, but everyone thought they had more than enough cash. Towards the end of February, it was time for the Swede to start spending his money. Then came the problems. The man had probably taken severe psychological damage from the long stay in a country where alcohol is extremely cheap. The mother said, In the first days, he was allegedly exposed to revenge. He sustained injuries. The motorcycle allegedly ran out of gas. Actually, we think it was self-inflicted because he didn't dare admit that he had no money. On February 23, the man disappeared, once again to retrieve his hidden money, he claimed. Two days later, the family was told that they had to come to a remote house on the other side of the island to pick him up. He had been found hanging from a ceiling beam in the unoccupied house. 
The place was the same where all the family and friends had celebrated the man's 37th birthday earlier during the stay. The mother said, I dare not think about whether he did it himself or whether others took his life when he was going to collect the money if he had money. She contacted the Swedish embassy in Bangkok and the deceased was transported home to Sweden. A spokesperson for the Swedish Ministry of Foreign Affairs said, It is true that we have received a report of a suicide on Koh Tao. We have helped notify relatives here in Sweden. Can't get alone. The passports of the Norwegian family were confiscated. In negotiations with the owner of the bungalow where they live, the woman got her passport back. She was also allowed to borrow 10,000 baht, probably a few thousand Norwegian krona, from the owner to get to Norway to raise money. The mother said, I travelled six hours by boat to the mainland and took a train up to Bangkok to change my plane ticket. I only had a cheap ticket with Aeroflot and had to be in Bangkok for five days before I got home to Oslo. At the Norwegian embassy, I was told they could not help the boys, but I was able to borrow some money privately from an employee so that I had food. Once at home in Norway, it was not as easy to get a loan as she had thought. Since she had quit her job, her previous employer could not give her a loan. Banks and credit institutions will also not give loans to the unemployed. The mother said, both at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and at my local social welfare office, I have been told that they cannot help. But then it must be wrong. The youngest is a minor. He is a child. I need help getting them home. Due to the pressure she lives under, she is unable to work now to earn money. The mother said, as soon as they come home, all three of us will work to get the money back. And she acknowledges having contributed to the bill and wants to pay back. At the local social welfare office, VG is informed that the caseworkers are bound by confidentiality. We were not allowed to speak to the case manager who had met the woman.